Hi, it's Adam from Zero Friction Cycling and uh, welcome to episode three. So uh, episode two, I covered off on the main lubricant types. Uh, so today we're gonna to be talking about uh, some basic maintenance. So this is really gonna be sort of maintenance level one. Now you might've seen over time, if you've looked, there's this, I mean, there's so much content out there on you know how you should clean or look after your chain and drivetrain. Uh, but really it does, what you should do depends a lot on what lubricant type you're actually using. And so it's not sort of quite so generic. And also one of the goals of zero friction cycling, especially now that, uh, you know, really in the last 18 months or so, the, I guess, how, how much some of the top products have progressed versus, you know, the options that we had even, even that sort of short time ago, things have really changed such that for a lot of riders, we can, we can really start to think about, you know, moving to not needing to use any solvents at all, at all in, our, in our maintenance. So one of the things I, I guess that, you know, I'm focused on obviously is, you know, not burning through drivetrain parts unnecessarily aside from the cost it's just it's it's wasteful uh, and two uh, when I worry I guess think about the tens of millions of households around the world that are using a whole bunch of degreases and solvents to try to regularly maintain their their chain and their drivetrain you know, where's it all going and and you know sometimes I, I think in some areas cycling can be a lot greener than than what it is and so There'll hopefully be a bit today that you'll learn about, okay, if I'm currently using lubricant type, you know, X, uh, and that was sort of touched on a bit last time. Uh, for my type of riding, maybe I should look at a different lubricant type because the maintenance on that is going to be, you know, for me so much easier and I may not need to use any solvents um, and, you know, to keep that low friction. So, so we're gonna sort of, yeah, move into that and, uh, and sort of really go through that maintenance by type. So um, I guess, Step one, we spoke about the traditional dry lubricants. Your best way of maintenance on that is don't use them. Um, number two is your wet lubricants. So your wet lubricants, are, I did highlight sort of silk synergetic last time as the number one, which it is, and uh, you know in that sort of lubricant type. And uh, there's Nix Friction is also a great choice. Um, and wet lubricants are probably the most common. And so there's, there's, gonna, there's a huge, I guess, you know, performance difference between the top and the worst. Uh, or a random choice in the middle. And the main thing though is, I guess, first you need to consider what is your type of riding. So if it is always on the road and in the dry, just really keep an eye on, you know, how is my chain and dry train looking? If, it's, if your chain is a black mess, then, you know, it's really becoming more of sort of, I guess, a grinding pace masquerading as your chain lubricant than an actual low friction lubricant. And that's going to be reflected in your chain and component wear rate. So, You'll notice, you know, over time yourself that you know if you're trying X lubricant and it just becomes this black mess quite quickly, maybe think about trying a different wet lubricant because the top ones, such as your Synergetic, part of their secret is they need so little, you know, of the actual lubricant to do a perfect job of lubricating your chain that they do stay a lot cleaner, a lot longer. Uh, when it does come time to maintain though, with wet lubricants, unfortunately, we pretty much still are stuck with using some type of solvent. So most of them will clean off fairly easily, um, even just with a cheap common solvent like mineral terps, uh, something like that. You don't have to buy a degreaser, which can be quite expensive. Um, but yeah, depending on the lubricant, you may need to use it relatively often. You'll find that you actually have to use it a bit. Uh, off chain, uh, sorry, off bike is best versus doing on bike, but there are, you know, you'll see there are various sort of clip-on um, you know, chain cleaning items or uh, tools that you can use to clean the chain on the bike. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is be prepared that you probably will need to do it fairly frequently, especially if you're just on a bit of a random choice and that you're going to go through a bit of solvent. But um, I would, I guess, implore, you know, just keep that in the container. Do an annual run to your council's local hazardous um, waste disposal as opposed to pouring it out down the drain or you know in a sneaky corner in in the garden so that's really i guess on on the wet lubricant side just some i guess as i lead into the next type though just a, a few figures from testing with regards to you know if you're sort of really in the wet lubricant camp you do ride you know gravel mountain bike or in a lot of harsh conditions so the top five wet lubricants um, that have been tested, uh, their average wear rate through the dry contamination test uh, in the zero friction cycling test is 27.9%. Uh, uh, so that's how much of the chain is being worn within that sort of 1000 kilometer test block with dry contamination. 
Uh, the average wear rate for the chain coating type lubricants and immersive waxes, so out of the top five of those, we're looking at 4.3%. So you know, we're looking at basically around sort of, you know, less than one fifth of the wear rate for your chain coating type lubricants and immersive waxes versus the top wet lubricants that have been tested. So you know, that, that's pretty significant. And it's really not surprising in, you know, obviously the fact that if it's a wet lubricant, every particle of dust, it's going to stick to it on contact. There's just no getting around that. So, um, you know, whereas if it's a chain coating type, it's a solid lubricant, they're very, very dry uh, dust contamination resistant. So, so they're outstanding for, you know, being able to be used in those type of conditions. When it comes to wet conditions, so if you're riding into in the harsh, um, you know, sort of rain, be it road or even off-road, things get really tricky for all lubricants because water is the transport medium to bring the contamination right into your chain and it's going to get pressed into whatever lubricant that you're running on the chain. But still, the, the test results are, are still very, very clear in favour of uh, chain coating type lubricants versus wet. So wet lubricants are uh, through the wet contamination block for zero friction cycling. The top five are pretty much bang on 50, uh, sorry, 50 percent wear rate uh, for that 1,000 kilometer test period. Uh, for the chain coating type lubricants, the average rate is 24.3 uh, percent. So it's still less than half. So there is a bit of a misconception around waxing and chain coating type lubricants not really being suited to wet riding, which is something I'm going to go into uh, more in depth in a future episode as to why that misconception is there. But just as a quick sort of cover off, um, I guess, as to what should probably guide your lubricant choice, that's, a, I guess, a bit of sort of pretty robust, you know, test data that it's been tested uh, quite a bit, obviously, the, the you know, wet lubricants versus chain coating lubricants and waxes. And really, these will come up trump, especially if you're riding in those harsh conditions. Now, the next part, though, I guess, when it comes to the maintenance side of things, is we actually get a bit of a double bonus with a lot of these type of lubricants. So a lot of the lubricants, so the immersive waxes and some of the top chain uh, coating type lubricants, which are more or less your sort of top waxes, you know, with an emulsified carrier in a bottle. A lot of these waxes actually will melt off um, just from boiling water. So you can go out and do a pretty harsh conditions ride and get a brilliant clean, uh, literally just by boiling up the kettle and swishing the chain around in some boiling water. Make sure it's in an open container. Don't uh, put boiling water in a closed container and shake it because that will release steam. The lid will blow off and you'll have a really interesting time with uh, that and your face. So yeah, always open container if you're using boiling water. Um, and, it, and for these type of lubricants, honestly, going even to a boiling water flush clean, really that's only needed or I, I really only recommend those uh, or going to that length if it's been a wet ride where the water has brought all that you know, contamination deep into the chain and it has been pressed into the solid chain coating. Um, if it's just been a dry ride, their contamination resistance is such that you know, really it just, it just doesn't get in there. We can see from those sort of test results that I mentioned before, you know, only 4.3% wear through that you know, 1,000 kilometer uh, dry test block. That's, that's exceptionally low. That's really lower than what most people are getting with a good wet lube you know, on their road riding. And, and this is you know, being put through some pretty harsh uh, you know, uh, dust contamination conditions. So honestly, if it's just been a dry ride, uh, literally all you need is say a microfiber cloth, spray some methylated spirits on the outside of that cloth, wipe the chain, uh, you know, the outside of the chain, just to remove the surface dust. So some surface dust is going to stick to your chain uh, just literally through static electricity of your chain going through the air. Same as some dust sticks to your bicycle frame and you don't have you know, lubricant on your bicycle frame. So it's literally just to remove the surface dust off the outside of your chain before you uh, re-lube with your chain coating type lubricant so that you're not importing you know, dust contamination into your chain when you do your re-lubrication. And similarly, when you're doing a re-wax, it's literally just reducing the amount of dust that you're going to bring into your uh, wax pot because the, the more you keep that wax perfectly clean, then you know, uh, obviously the, the better that each coating of wax that goes on your chain is going to be. Uh, so yeah, really there's just, a, I guess, a quite a big, I guess, difference in the type of maintenance that you need to do if you're running a wet lubricant versus a chain coating type lubricant or a wax. We've got the need for solvents uh, on one and sort of which way you want to try to apply and, and make sure you dispose of those versus really for, for 
99% of your writing um, with a chain coating type lubricant or immersive wax, dry road, there's no cleaning necessary basically ever. If it's a lot of dust with gravel, mountain bike and so on, it's wiping the chain with uh, just some methylated spirit sprayed onto a cloth just to remove the surface dust. And if it's been a full wet ride, then it's boiling up the kettle, swishing it around in some boiling water to melt off and flush out that wax coating that's had the contamination pressed into it. Dry the chain and then you either re-lube it with your chain coating type lubricant or put your chain back into the wax pot. So uh, that covers the main one. So there's really just one other type that I, that I guess fairly popular lubricants that, that I haven't covered. And that's just sort of older style, um, or I call them older style, your wax emulsion lubes such as your Squirt and your Smooth. Now, uh, they're a bit tougher. They can be a tougher clean. So um, as opposed to the, the, the type of waxes they use, they're not something that will just melt off with boiling up the kettle. So they do tend to take a solvent and generally a, you know, they, they can use a, a fairly strong one. So if you're using something like Squirt or Smooth, um, if it's dry, so dry road, dry dust, you pretty much follow the same protocol as for these. Their, their contamination resistance is, is actually extremely good, so you don't really need to worry too much if you're just riding around in the dust. Just wipe that chain before you reapply. Uh, if it has been wet, then you are faced with a bit of a tougher clean. Um, and so there is a product, the best one I'd recommend at the moment, so this is a product that's been designed specifically to clean uh, wax type chains. Uh, that's a product called UFO Clean. Uh, so I will do a demonstration in, in a future video, but UFO Clean is a product that's designed basically to dissolve the wax. So you can put those type of chains into say a spare bit on of UFO Clean, let it soak, and then rinse it out after it's had a five minute soak with that boiling water just to, to flush clear the UFO Clean. Uh, and then again, dry, and then you're going to reapply those lubricants. Uh, for those two particular types, those last two I mentioned, your wax emulsion types, they are a tougher, um, they, or they do have some initial penetration issues. So um, I'm going to expand further in a future episode about what you should do, read that. But um, if you can apply them immersively, if not, um, I do have a guide on my website about how to apply uh, that lubricant uh, and try to ne negate those initial penetration issues. So, but that'll probably be, I guess, a bit of a wrap on maintenance level one. I hope that's been a bit more helpful than just the usual stuff that you sort of see out there which sort of has just one maintenance type that I guess covers all lubes they really are quite different and for a lot of the top ones now as I mentioned you really you just don't even need the solvents and they do have such uh, excellent contamination resistance that yeah if you've been sort of on a traditional wet lube for a while especially if you ride off-road uh, you're probably maybe picking up on the, the hints from this, this episode that it really might be worth considering switching from a wet lube to more of a chain coating type or having a look at the immersive waxing wrap because you can then move away from solvents altogether, have a super clean drivetrain all the time, super low wear rates. It really is just, you know, win, win, win. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much maintenance level one. I'll be going also further uh, and deeper in the maintenance side. A, a common question is, you know, do I need an ultrasonic cleaner or should I have an ultrasonic cleaner and what are the benefits and how do I use them? So uh, episode in the future, I will dedicate specifically to ultrasonic cleaners, but uh, in the interim, uh, the, the short message is, unless you're looking to prepare race chains, uh, fully optimized race chains, uh, no, the answer is no. And I'll cover off uh, though, if, if you do have one or really want to get an ultrasonic cleaner, why you should maybe consider it and how to best use it. But as level one maintenance uh, by a lubricant type, that'll cover off for episode three. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other YouTube type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.